Welcome back, everybody. It is another episode of Important Work. I'm your host, Chris Angel, and I'm here with my guest today, Ethan Butte. Hi, Ethan. Hey, thank you so much. It is great to have you here. You and I got to share a stage a couple weeks ago now at a YPN event here in Spokane, and I loved not only your message, but you have a new book out called Rehumanize Your Business, and I can't wait to go in uh, to detail on that. Um, But first, let's start with a little backstory, like just so people, I know who you are, but so others can find out who you are. What do you do professionally, and what is your take on the world? Sure. Uh, my title is Chief Evangelist at BombBomb. I've been here at BombBomb. We're a software company that makes it easy to record and send videos to get you face-to-face with more people more often, which is part of rehumanizing your business. And, uh, and I, I guess I arrived in this position by being a one-person marketing team for about four years and really being um, in the organization from say two or 300 customers up to 50,000. And so uh, really understanding how people are using simple personal videos, who they are, success stories, et cetera. I just found myself in this position of kind of learning, teaching and practicing a movement that we call relationships through video to separate it from, you know, polished scripted lit uh, videos. And, and I think my, my engagement and the way, the way I've been involved in, the experience and with customers and with practitioners and teaching it and, and doing it. Um, I guess I, that makes me an evangelist to raise <laughs> it up and, and talk about how important and fun and valuable it is um, in, in changing the way that you, that you connect and communicate with the people who matter most, not just to your work, but to your life. Yeah. I love that. I think for this audience, so much of, I don't even know if this audience would say we think of ourselves as business people, but I think we find ourselves in business because our calling, the thing that's calling to us can't be done inside of someone else's container. Um, we just don't have the freedom or the flexibility to do it. And so we, we take, we, we answer the call, get into business for ourselves. And we're like, what have I done? Like, you know, this is, this is like way beyond me. And I think that's part of the work, but I'm curious from your perspective. I mean, uh, you just wrote a whole book that, um, you know, called rehumanize your business that I would say this tribe is all about this conversation. We want to be human pe- humans with working with other humans and we just happen to be in business. So walk me through a little bit of why you wrote the book. What was the problem you were solving, answering, speaking to? Yeah, I, I was just, I hit my six year anniversary full time here at Bomb Bomb, and I was just getting like really reflective and, and excited and um, warm hearted about how far this, this community had really come. Right. So from, you know, a few hundred people to, uh, you know, tens of thousands of people. I was just really excited about uh, my participation in it. And I knew that, uh, you know, from a problem solving standpoint, I knew that if you wanted to get the material that we put into that book, you know, you'd have to watch these 14 webinars and read these 72 blog posts and attend, (laughs) you know, this stage presentation. So it was like, um, it was a commitment to make sure that this thing keeps going that more people have access through this like nice, simple, tangible thing that people can share and uh, pick up and pass along. And of course, there's audiobook and digital too. But it was, let's take the best stories, the best examples, the spirit of the movement and put it into one tangible package so that it could reach people who might not ever hear of BombBomb and might not ever know that we exist as a software company. Like for me, if the book is successful if it keeps selling at the pace that it's selling now, not because of any royalty. I mean, you don't get rich writing books unless right. you're writing like true, like New York Times bestsellers. Like most people like me or you don't get rich writing a book. We do it to advance, you know, the ideas that yeah. we hold really dear so that they can reach more people that are beyond our immediate scope. And so I think having, you know, a book published by Wiley that is, you know, in airport bookstores and that people are buying, you know, 15 copies of and giving out to friends and clients and customers and, you know, other people in their network. It just helps the idea spread. So, you know, some of them might turn into BombBomb customers and that's a, it's one of the reasons the company got behind it. I didn't know if it was going to be my book or if it was going to be a company book or what it was going to be. Yeah. yeah. But, um, you know, obviously the, the, there was a motivation for the company, but for me, I know that it will be a better world and it will be more fun to do business when this is normalized behavior to stop relying on your keyboard as much as getting face-to-face through the HD webcam that's built into your laptop or your smartphone. Yeah, right. Well, so some backstory on that a little bit. You know, when, uh, reading just even the intro um, of your book, I get inspired where we're talking about 
uh, the same black text on the same white screen where, you know, like so much of our digital communication in this day and age has taken out the human element. And I think what most of us who are people oriented, who, who are used to being in inspirational conversations get, we feel out of, it's so abstract online. Like we're, so that there is a conversation for how to take technology and make it feel human to me feels like important work. And so one of the ways that you guys do that is through video email. I mean, if we're going to get really concrete, yep. you guys are advocating and have a, have a whole tool around video email. Correct. And it's, uh, and it's because the messenger has been stripped from the message. It's yeah. so interesting how normalized it's become to send some of our most important and most valuable messages, right? There's a lot riding on the outcome. It's not always a, a sales contract, let's say, but there's a lot riding on these outcomes, right? Just sending messages for no reason through emails. And, and so it's interesting to think about how much is lost. And we lean on some pretty interesting and um, frightening is too strong a word, but you know, the consequences of relying on faceless digital communication for this work, for these messages, for these, you know, whether it's positive, whether it's informative, whether it's um, uh, consoling someone, like all the, like there's so much value in the messages that we're sending. And yet we're doing it in a way that, tr that dehumanizes us as the sender. And in some cases dehumanizes the recipient and that they may be left to feel like they're a number, for example. Right. Yeah. There, there are so many, um, I still say to this day that email is personal to people. It's why we get offended that people spam us. And um, it is also this thing that we're like, ah, oh, stupid email. Like I have all of my inboxes full. And um, as a marketer, you know, I, I want the email inbox to be a treasured place. And yet I, I can't help but hear the snarky voice in the back that's like, is email really dead? Uh, do people really want to get this? And I think what's missing for for people is the, um, email has become utility rather than community or connection, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the number of really high quality emails that I get on a regular basis, whether it's weekly or monthly, I don't subscribe to daily emails. That's just too much from any one person or source uh, for me. But, you know, when I think about some of the emails that I get and I'm excited to get them, hmm. um, you know, I can count them on, on my two hands. I mean, there just aren't that many because it, it takes a lot of work. It's an art unto itself. And, uh, and so it's hard to do. And yet somehow email remains the number one channel uh, in terms of digital, in terms of ROI. Um, because you can, A, it's tracked really, really well. B, right. everyone has it, right? Like, you know, think about the people in your personal network. And I offer this to the listener, you know, all the people in your personal network, well, you know, you're, maybe you're connected with 40% of them on Facebook and 52% of them on, on LinkedIn and, mm -hmm. you know, 32% of them on Instagram. All of you can reach anyone in your network through email um, right. because we're all there. And so it does have so many benefits that I think it's, the, it's either the second or the third chapter that's called email, the broken uh, indispensable tool. You know, it's got these yeah. obvious flaws and yet we can't, like, I couldn't do my job without it. And I, I mean, I rely on it even for family and friends too. And so um, I think this opportunity to be conversational, to be yourself, to make sure that, that you're capitalizing on the idea that it's not just what you say, but how you say it. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I punch up some myths around video in particular, but I also punch up the idea that 93% of our communication is nonverbal. You know, that number is often thrown around. It's a, a slight mistreatment of some of uh, Dr. Albert Morabian's work. That said, even though that 93% number is just too high, probably, um, how we say things is so much uh, a part of the meaning and the value of the message that uh, we need to, that's part of the rehumanizing process. I think the uh, power of video, I mean, I've said this for a long time in my, my marketing programs where I'm like, look, you have to start to get comfortable with video because the connection that happens, the energy that happens through video is different than even audio and definitely different than writing. But uh, when you can uh, effectively communicate, and I don't mean scripted communicate, I just mean authentically effectively communicate, um, the relationship that transfers is unbelievable. And I, I call it relationship at scale. I think you guys use a very similar phrase in your book, but like I will go to a conference and people will say, I feel like I know you. I've never met them, but they've seen me on podcasts, on, on videos, on podcasts, et cetera. And it's just the power of that relationship that gets built through video. I mean, you guys have seen this, I'm sure. 
Absolutely. I mean, what you just said there is something we hear very, very often from our, from our customers, which is people feel like they know me before they ever meet me. Yeah. I do a, um, you know, I, I wrote it first person and I include some of the stories with my co-author and friend, Steve Passanelli. Um, and uh, there are examples from both of us where we have this happen, where people we don't know come up and greet us just like, you know, you offer. Okay. And I hear it all the time from our customers as well. And so it's this, uh, there's a psychological proximity that is built Mm. even in the absence of physical proximity. So we're psychologically proximate. People mm. feel psychologically and even emotionally near to us. It's the same reason, you know, we get the same thing with, um, you know, back when television news was a thing, uh, you know, you'd feel close to the, the newscaster or the weather person, or you feel maybe close to um, a television show host or a, an actor or an actress. It's this, totally, you know, it's, yeah. it's the repetition uh -huh. of exposure to their full self. And so I just want to encourage people as we're talking about this, you, you might think video, I can't do it. This is not about lights and scripts and editing and production. This is just about you looking the camera in the lens, being yourself and talking to one or three or eight people or 8,000 if you want to. Right, um, right. But really this kind of, um, especially on a one-to-one -one basis, I see yeah. you, I hear you, I appreciate you, and I have some information for you. Um, it's just a really powerful play for you and for the recipient. And um, if you've ever had someone say yes to you in a professional capacity, then it is suitable for you to use video because you are uh, approachable uh, yeah. and you are uh, someone that people need and want to see. I think the video thing takes, like this style of video, uh, where it's not about perfection, it's about connection and um, takes a lot of the pressure that I think limits people's important work. I think so many people have something important to do in the world, but then they keep waiting for the lights, the equipment, the I need a green, I think all the stuff that they think they need in order for it to be valid. Like in other words, they think their validity comes from how good it looks. When in reality, the validity comes from simply how much you care and your willingness to share, your willingness to step out and actually make that first connection, um, especially done this way, you know, video done this way. Yeah, I think, um, you know, the bigger part, you know, is we're talking about doing the work that truly matters to you deeply, but it might not be work that you're doing at all. You're just imagining a day when you can do that work, when you're going to finally give yourself permission to do that work. And, and I call that like finding your voice and you have to, mm. whether it's writing, whether it's video, whether it's people wonder like, I don't have a lot of experience in this. I just feel like this is what I should be doing. And, and you feel like, the, you know, they're experts in the field. Things have already been said. Listen, no one has your own experience. No one else is you. You are the most uniquely qualified person to be yourself. And honoring that and knowing that um, you only find your voice, whether it's in video or any other medium you want to start, uh, you know, behaving in or, or communicating through um, things you want to practice. The only way to find that voice is to actually do it. And so, you know, if you're sitting on the sidelines waiting, giving yourself excuses like, well, I don't have the right camera yet in terms of video, right. um, you know, just, just drop it and get going because it's the only way to find your voice is by exercising it. I also think uh, we have a, one of our participants in our program calls it, um, call, you know, so we do, we do a lot of um, video creation in our program. And uh, so you're posting on Facebook every day. And one of the things that he calls it is a one-way mirror. So you're posting out into the world and you can't see who's reacting. They can all see you, but you can't see them. And if they're watching, not watching, whatever. I think one of the things that's cool about your platform is you can actually send an email and actually see open rates, who clicked, who played, whatever. And you actually can get feedback that's a great confidence booster when you know like uh, people, people that you care about that you sent an email to opened it, watched it. And I don't know, you may have stats on reply rates or open rates, but I think that goes a long way in having people step further into their important work. Yeah, good call. And thanks for that observation. Yeah, we, we give people multiple ways to interact with your video. Obviously, we're, just, we're tracking the email open and the video play link click if you added a link in there. But uh, in, in most video playback experiences, when you send a video through the BombBomb Bomb platform, uh, people can like the video. So you just get a little alert that this person liked that video. Uh, mm -hmm. They can comment directly on the video itself. And that'll come back to you as excuse me, that'll come back to you as a message. And, uh, and in most cases, we can also take over their webcam or smartphone uh, camera and they can send a video back to you even if they're not BombBomb -bomb customers. And so we're constantly trying to, to close that loop. And um, I'll just put it back to the, to the beginner part of the conversation. Um, if you are new to this style of video communication 
and, uh, and you pick out five, eight, 10 people and you reach out family members, friends, past clients, just to say, thank you, or I've been thinking about you, or I saw the good news or whatever the case might be. Um, you're going to get some of these replies and responses, whether it's a direct reply to the email or one of these other ways people can interact. And, and to your point, Chris, this positive feedback loop gives you the validation that yes, I am good enough. Yes, this style of video is good enough. Yes, my, my imperfection is in fact my perfection. Yes, mm -hmm. people are happy to see me and hear from me. Yes, this is a different and better way to communicate with people. And so um, that feedback loop is really helpful for people that are um, – a little bit anxious to get going, which by the way, is the majority of people, not most yeah. people, even highly competent and professional people are like, I, I don't like the way I look and sound and they slow themselves down and they really get hung up in their own head when really it's all about letting the other person know how much you uh, appreciate them or how much you're thinking about them or how much, uh, you know, it, any business communication or personal communication can be done with video. I read a stat um, about a year ago or so that from Harris Interactive that said 98% uh, of people distrust and are cynical about what they see online. And, um, and I, I think that's very interesting in the conversation of video because I, I think um, coming out of the 80s, 90s, where like, you know, you see T, there was no social media and people going live on video. So what you had were green rooms and people getting um, their makeup done before and you had massive lights and big budgets for cameras and you had all this stuff that went into teleprompters, all the stuff that went into make video perfect. And we've, we've since left that era. We are now in an era where I think perfection actually leads to and contributes to people distrusting distrusting it because you're uh, you know like i said on stage that time like you're, you've got your mask on and you're coming out all instagram perfect and people people are like i don't know if i can trust it because i don't know who you really are but but your kind of video platform allows for the mask to come off and for people to see the real you and that's i think what people trust yeah it's so good you're exactly right about that it's funny i can't i i started my career in local broadcast television and oh, so right. Right. i wrote produced and edited all kinds of like expensive polished long to produce stuff mm -hmm. all the time. And so um, a couple things happened for me uh, and, and what you're describing, I call the shiny authenticity inversion. Mm -hmm. You know, as I was growing up and even in my young professional career, you, you built trust by having um, shininess, right? The, the bigger budget you had, and if you could run ads on TV or you had a really nice on an early website, like a nicely produced homepage video or whatever, yeah. The consumer, the average consumer would say, gosh, you know, that the, they look legit. I can trust that, right? Mm -hmm. And then it flipped because, you know, like the phrase marketers ruin everything, you know. Yeah, right. Yeah. It, we say it because it's largely true. Yeah, right. um, yeah, totally. and, and so too many people got burned, right? Like I call it anticipation, right? So you see this commercial or you, or you get this message and you're like, man, it's going to be the best thing ever. It's just like when I was a little kid, it just, you conjured so much in going back to the 80s. Um, right, right. You know, I think about the cartoons I would watch and you see these commercials for these really awesome toys and then you get the toy and you're like, it's just not as good as the commercial because they had like the perfect backyard or they had all the right. other play sets to go with it or like, it's just, yeah, yeah. it's cool, but it's not like I'm, I'm anticipated and, you know, cause I got all this hype built up. So that's, that's the shiny. And then, so it flipped. Now you build trust by being real by being honest, by being yourself, by being authentic. And it's really interesting about a year and a half after I posted um, a blog post on the bomb bomb blog call, called the shiny authenticity inversion, where I was kind of just theorizing around this. Cause I was observing it the same as you do. Mm -hmm. um, uh, shortly after the content marketing Institute published a piece by Victor Gamez mm -hmm. and it was called um, uh, visual realism. And it was about big brands like Coca-Cola, Levi's, Beta Brand, like these multi-billion dollar international organizations intentionally dumbing down the quality of their photos and videos for social media in order to dot, 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 mm -hmm. Build trust. Yep. So while, you know, while we as individuals who can instantly go on with something honest and authentic and attractive and vulnerable and connective, these giant brands with basically unlimited budgets relative to us, I mean, there's this bottomless budget, they're intentionally dumbing down the framing and the quality and the, to try to be where we already are right. right. We already are kind of amateur and honest and real. Um, right. And so while we're, Sitting here on the sidelines because like, I, I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. It doesn't look good enough. It's not polished enough. It's not shiny enough. 
these major brands are coming down toward us because we already have the advantage. The individual person yeah. and, and the smaller company has the advantage because um, you can be yourself. Yeah. So good. Yeah. It's so, so good. I love that. I feel like uh, part of when we talk about approachability, um, when you come off too perfect, when you come off too put together, it's just, I can't relate. It's unapproachable. I, I, I'm afraid to engage you because I, I'm not you. I mean, you're perfect and I'm, I'm just me. So that's what you're describing. I think with those brands is they're, they're coming down and becoming more approachable. Um, and I think that's our advantage. If we think about like, how fast we can be approachable, just take your mask off and create a video and send it. Like it would be that easy. Uh, we just, I think we make it really big and complicated in our heads. So. Absolutely we do. And it's, um, you know, that's another nice thing about starting with this style of video. If you, if you've yeah. never done any video and you're like, you're looking at people who are putting up videos in the LinkedIn feed or in the Facebook feed or on their websites or whatever, the, the, the anxiety that's around that is, you know, you're putting yourself out there. And again, as you said, you don't get as much feedback as you might otherwise. And so you're, you're wondering and worrying. In this case, you can just send one-to-one -one videos and reach out to individual customers to say thank you or um, good news or it's time to talk about that contract renewal or I appreciate you taking the time to be on that appointment with me. And like, it's just this lightweight targeted thing. It doesn't have to be right. anything else. Um, that said, simple personal videos work everywhere. You, your platform does one-on-one -on -one emails, but you also do broadcast emails. Like what, give me some. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So the tool. Yeah. So we have, um, you know, you and I were talking before we were recording about the way we work inside the Gmail inbox through our Google Chrome extension. Uh, yeah. We also have that functionality in a lot of Outlook instances. We have our own web application that's mm -hmm. essentially like, um, like a MailChimp or a constant contact, but designed completely around video. So it's a seamless experience. You don't have to host your video somewhere else and bring it over into the emails. Like the whole wow. platform was designed around video from day one. So there you can manage lists and contacts or use like a, um, a list syncer so it can sync to your CRM um, and then send your emails out of bomb bomb. We also have mobile apps for iPhone and Android where you can send to one person or to lists of people. We have integrations with a bunch of different um, real estate CRMs. Uh, and platforms, mortgage CRMs and platforms, mainstream CRMs and platforms like Salesforce and uh, wow. Outreach and Zendesk and a bunch of other ones too. So our whole goal is to get you face-to-face -face with more people more often because you are better in person. And if you're not adding value in that process by being a human, mm. Um, mm -hmm. then that function is going to be automated at some point in the foreseeable future. And so, you know, any, any part of the customer experience process or even employee experience process where you matter as a person or your team member matters as a person, look for those opportunities to step it up and be yourself by maybe sending some videos uh, in place of plain typed out text. Because otherwise, again, um, if you're not adding value there, then it might just as well be automated because frankly, um, you know, we cost money. And so right. if we're going to be there, we might as well be our best selves, which is to be fully, fully human. Yeah. I, uh, just to speak to the, the actual tool, like it is, um, you know, there's a lot of email providers who they'll, you can, you can insert a thumbnail of it, of a video and then hyperlink that thumbnail to your YouTube video or wherever. And then there's all the background stuff that happens from getting that video from your phone to, to YouTube and all the processing power and the time it takes. I mean, it's just, it, you guys have made it so simple that it all, that you host the video. So that's cool, but it plays in the email. You don't have to, it doesn't redirect you to YouTube. There's so much that goes into making this easy. And I, I love that about uh, this, this tool. I think it's um, I saw it on your website, it was patent pending. So, I mean, like there's some real IP that's going into this experience that isn't duplicatable in other, other products. You might say it differently, but that's just me from the outside looking in. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, our whole goal is to make it easy to like, people say, can I do this myself? Yeah, you can. But as you already suggested, you know, it takes six or eight steps and you're just never going to do it in a repeatable way. Whereas we have a thousand people in our customer base who've sent a thousand or more videos. I've sent 10,000 myself. And so if it's not fast and easy to do, you're not going to do anything a thousand times. And if it's not yeah. better than what you were doing before, you're also not going to do it a thousand times, yeah. you know? So it's this, yeah. uh, I appreciate you observing that. Our whole goal is to make it really easy for you so that you can just, again, be yourself yeah. more often and just send, send, send. Yeah. So good. I think this type of um, engaging others in your important work. Like if you, so you listening to this have important work, you have a message to share, you have relationships to create, to grow that important work. And one of the fastest way to do that is through 
human communication. And sometimes face-to-face -face coffee appointments, lunch appointments are just too inefficient. Um, you, you can't reach enough people in enough time with that strategy. There's a time and place for that. But um, in lieu of that, like, you know, you have tools now like BombBomb where you can actually create relationship at scale uh, without having to spend the time and the energy to go have a coffee appointment or a lunch appointment. Um, even, even if people want to learn more about um, BombBomb or connect with you, what is a great place to go? Sure. Thank you for that opportunity. I welcome direct communication. My email address is Ethan, E-T-H-A-N, at bombbomb.com. That's the word bomb twice, B-O-M-B, B-O-M-B.com. You can check out the website, bombbomb.com. Uh, you can check out the book at bombbomb.com slash book, or you can just search Rehumanize Your Business in Google or at Amazon, uh, and you'll, you'll see it come up. It's got a bright orange cover, and you're kind enough to hold it up. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and, I, and I welcome connections on LinkedIn as well. Uh, my last name is spelled B-E-U-T-E, -E, Ethan Butte. Awesome. Ethan, thanks for being here, man. I love the important work that you've infused into something like video email, that there's a bigger mission, a bigger idea here besides just sending emails is really magical. I love it. And I appreciate you being on the show. Thank you. I appreciate what you're doing to help people unlock their most important work and to do with confidence. And, uh, and the last tip here, you're sincere about your work or else you wouldn't be pursuing the important work. And so that sincerity is something that people can feel. And it's just another reason to get face to face, whether it's in video or whether it's in person, like your sincerity around your important work is a big, big deal. Yeah. So good. Love it. Awesome stuff. Thank you, Ethan. Thank you so much. And uh, until next time, see ya. Do you have important work in the world? We can help you produce a show just like this one and get your message out in the world. Go to mygroundswell.com to connect with us now.